Senate, as we uh, watch President Trump's uh, helicopter, <clears throat> pardon me, it's interesting. He really is doing everything he can that's wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dan, I mean, it's like there, as, as I think Van was just saying, this is a textbook case of how not to leave the presidency. Whine and cry, pretend that you didn't win, incite your supporters, yeah. stage an insurrection. And on his way out the door, he pardons a bunch of his cronies. Elliot Broidy, Steve Bannon, as a, there's an ethics group that just put out a statement saying, like, even Nixon didn't pardon his cronies on the way out the door. I mean, really, you think that he couldn't get any more disgraceful? Well, just give him a few hours. And this was uh, just the, the last set of pardons. He's already uh, issued some pretty horrendous pardons uh, for the people who we have covered uh, who have done some uh, pretty bad things, uh, been convicted of doing some pretty bad things in Donald Trump's name. But right now, what I'm definitely sensing, and I'm sure you two are here sitting kind of above uh, this city, is a palpable sense of sort of suspended animation. That we know that this is going to happen intellectually. We see that helicopter on uh, the White House lawn. We know he's going to get in it uh, for the last time. But there has been such desire by more than half of the country uh, in, in a very passionate, activist way to see this man go. And now they're watching their television screens, waiting, holding their breath for it to happen. And I have, we have never covered anything like this. Certainly people have been disappointed or excited, but nothing like this. It is. Um, it is in, their, in people's constitution, small c, about how they feel about it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's sometimes hard to remember, but the truth is, four years ago, a majority of Americans voted against Donald Trump. And they've been governed by this president for four years. Uh, and then another majority of Americans voted to vote him out of office. Uh, and he rejected their their decision for months and months leading up until this point. But I do think we should remind people of what normal means when we say this is not what it's supposed to be like. We don't know if President Trump's going to write a note to his successor, but the note that he received when he came into the White House said, uh, you know, regardless of the push and pull of daily politics, this was written by Barack Obama, it is up to us to leave those instruments of our democracy at least as strong as we found them. George H.W. Uh, Bush wrote to Bill Clinton, you will be our president when you read this note. I wish you well. I wish your family well. Your success is now our country's success. This is a president who, in everything that he does and everything that he says, rejects that kind of notion that uh, it does, it's not about who is in the presidency, it's about what is good for the country. We'll see him today kind of giving himself a big party at the end, even though, as Jamie noted, he's leaving this office in disgrace. Complete disgrace. Uh, and we should note, uh, let's go to Caitlin Collins. Uh, Caitlin, the, the reason the president is doing it the way he's doing it is because, uh, A, he doesn't have the strength of character to attend the inauguration uh, of the person who beat him, but, but uh, two, he wants to get down to Florida before he is no longer president because he doesn't want to be on a private plane. He wants to be on Air Force One, but he's running behind schedule. Yeah, he is, Jake. He was supposed to actually leave the White House about 10 minutes ago. Obviously, you can see there he is not walked out of the resident side of the White House. That's where he's coming from, not the Oval Office where you sometimes see the president depart. He is, we're being now told by White House officials, he's running about half an hour behind. So uh, that gives you an indication of what's happening inside the residence of the White House as the president is prepared to leave. One thing that we did learn, Jake, is we do know the president's going to speak at Joint Base Andrews. Notably, it's going to be without a teleprompter. Of course, we have seen over the last four years what that means between teleprompter Trump and when Trump is off the cuff, his own aides, you know, sometimes sigh over remarks that they've written and prepared for the president, and he goes off script. But we're now being told he's not even going to have a script as he is making these remarks. So this may mirror more closely with how the president actually feels leaving office than that taped farewell address that he did the other day. But I also want to note, if you're looking there at the South Lawn of the White House, on the left side of the screen, you see those reporters waiting for the president to come out. 
Typically on the right side, there are a lot of guests waiting for the president. Any kind of mundane departure, you can still see dozens of guests or White House staffers waiting to see the president off. Notably, they're not there. I'm assuming some of them are at Joint Base Andrews, but none here as to what the president typically sees. Because lately he's been leaving the White House. He doesn't often take our questions anymore, even though he used to, and he would go over and greet the guests. But instead, we just saw a few aides go and board Marine One with some bankers boxes, Louis Vuitton luggage that we presume is the first ladies. Uh, but Jake, it will be notable to see the president speaking off of a teleprompter or without a teleprompter when he does finally make his way to Joint Base Andrews, which we were expecting in the next 15 minutes. But of course, that could slide depending on the president's schedule. Yeah, the fact that he's at living a speech is not good news for the country, uh, if I may observe. Uh, John Harwood, um, one of the biggest um, frauds uh, of this presidency has been the idea that he's draining the swamp as he promised would happen in 2016. Obviously the swamp has only accumulated more alligators and critters uh, since he uh, came here. Uh, I'm looking at this list of people he pardoned, a lot of financial crimes, a lot of rich people, a lot of well-connected people.